Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the sit-in movement, and we are fortunate to have with us to talk about the sit-in movement, Attorney Julian Blackshear. Uh, Attorney Julian Blackshear not only uh, will give us some information about the uh, movement from an historical perspective, but he will also give us some information because he personally participated in uh, the uh, sit-in movement. And of course, uh, Attorney Blackshear, let me welcome you again uh, to uh, the show. You've been with us on a number of occasions and you've given us excellent information each time. Mm -hmm. And what we'd like to do today is to uh, talk about uh, your participation in the uh, civil rights movement and uh, in the sit-in movement and uh, at the same time to uh, g have you to give our audience some information about your background and education and how you became involved in some of the things that you are now involved in. Well, I probably need to uh, answer your second question mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. I'm the managing member of a law firm here in Nashville, Tennessee called Smith, Hirsch, Blackshear and Harris in Metro Center. It's a, a, a legal lim limited liability partnership of uh, 11 attorneys and, and uh, five or six uh, supporting staff and things of that type. And I graduated from Morehouse College in 1963 and uh, graduated from uh, University of Tennessee Law School after having to fulfill my military commitment to Southeast Asia and things of that type. Mm -hmm. And I came here to Nashville to practice law 34 years ago in 1970 mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Senator Avon Williams for four mm -hmm. and a half years. Mm -hmm. and, and evolving from that experience, uh, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the formation of a law firm that has culminated in being the largest uh, minority law firm in the middle and eastern uh, districts of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Very frankly, it might be larger than western. I'm just mm -hmm. not quite sure of that. Mm -hmm. So this is where I am. Okay, and, and of course, uh, you started off earlier uh, dealing with the civil rights movement. And let's talk about uh, the uh, civil rights movement and how you first uh, met that uh, so-called civil rights movement. And give us some of the things sure. that are associated with that. Actually, it took place in my freshman year in Morehouse. I went to Morehouse in 1959, the first mm -hmm. semester. Mm -hmm. And my second semester of my freshman year, uh, the sit-in, the first sit-in demonstration occurred in uh, Green, Greensboro, North Carolina, North Carolina A&T, mm -hmm. and if I remember correctly, it was February the 1st, 1960. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, the, and that, that brought to the forefront mm -hmm. uh, the kind of injustice that existed where a person could not enjoy uh, the simple act of freedom of uh, purchasing a Coke and uh, consuming a 25 cent hamburger simply because of his race. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that, that kind of objection began to spread among the students. Mm -hmm. It got to, got to Atlanta too, where Morehouse is located. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I got myself involved mm -hmm. in it as one of the students uh, and I was kind of conscious about it. Mm -hmm. I never was one of the students on the quiet side mm -hmm. of the revolution. Mm -hmm. I was an uh, actual participant in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, I uh, belong to a student organizational movement formed by Julian Bond, who was a student in Morehouse, named Committee on Appeal for Human Rights. Mm -hmm. And you had a lot of the various uh, student organizations throughout the South and various different colleges mm -hmm. that had the independent student organizations doing these things mm -hmm. in city movement. They had it up here in Nashville and mm -hmm. things of like this too with Diane Nash and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. So having said that, evolving from those circumstances mm -hmm. where the students uh, got on the University of Shaw University in Raleigh, mm -hmm. North Carolina in that same year, 1960, mm -hmm. and formed a student movement mm -hmm. called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, mm -hmm. and the nickname was SNCC. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose of SNCC was to coordinate, organize, and mm -hmm. further mm -hmm. sit-in demonstrations wherever they were needed in the South mm -hmm. and in some cities up North. Mm -hmm. And so I was one of the original members of SNCC for that reason. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when uh, I participated in the, the first demonstration I participated in that led me to go to jail mm -hmm. was a, a, a restaurant called Dennis Grill, mm -hmm. uh, 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 a grill right across the street from Rich's department store mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Now we knew we were going to jail. Mm -hmm. So we already had our textbooks and everything already mm -hmm. made. The professors knew what was going to mm -hmm. happen. It was organized. Mm -hmm. Julian Bond was the director of communications at the time. Mm -hmm. And a guy named McGrew was the chairman of SNCC at the time. Mm -hmm. 
McGrew eventually turned Zoe's chairmanship to John Lewis, mm -hmm. and that's around about 1963. Mm -hmm. Well, that sit-in demonstration that day, we refused to leave. Mm -hmm. We were being subjected to the Georgia transfer the trespass law to say mm -hmm. if you did not leave a public establishment at the request of the manager, then you're subject to being convicted mm -hmm. for a trespass, a thousand dollar fine, or mm -hmm. a year in prison, or mm -hmm. both. Now, 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 of course, let, let me make preparations for this first sure. commercial break. But when we come back, uh, we want you to explain that and, yeah, and, and, and the, the uh, manifestations of that. And we'll be back with you uh, following this very, very short commercial break. The topic is the...